Hey everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lightning episode, and, uh, and today I have a very special guest. I have Steve, a 10 time MVP, to talk to me about Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. Stay tuned, let's do this. Hi everyone, we are in another Jumpstart Lightning episode, and today I have Steve. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long overdue. Uh, we've been chatting for a while, and I know you got some exciting stuff to talk to me about. So I was waiting to get you on the show and, and have this conversation about Azure Arc and Hybrid and all that. So what have you been up to these days? Tell the audience who you are. Yeah, so I work for a Fortune 500 uh, consulting firm, and we focus, the area I work in, we focus on Microsoft technologies for the enterprise. I'm actually a, a director of Azure Platform and Container Services. So I do a lot with containers, Kubernetes, especially AKS, mm -hmm. and more recently, Azure Arc enable Kubernetes. So exciting so, times. Yeah, I mean, it is exciting times. You know, obviously, I've been involved with Azure Arc. You've been involved with Azure Arc. And I know that uh, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes is one of your biggest passion uh, passions at this moment. So. Can you tell me a bit what, what is excited about, about this space for you and why you even got started working with Azure Arc? Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about Azure Arc in general. Um, and the reason I'm really excited about it is because the ability to take Azure, right? Like Azure native capabilities and things like ARM and extend that to other clouds, on-premises, essentially yeah. anywhere. And especially with Kubernetes, because Kubernetes is, is just been growing like a wildfire, right? So being able to take the things that Microsoft is doing in Azure, like Azure Monitor Container Insights, the stuff that's being done with Azure Policy for Kubernetes, right? And much more, Security Center, Defender, being able to take those things and extend those to Kubernetes clusters that I have running elsewhere is huge, right? Even being able to pull those things in and have them exist as objects inside of Azure, being able to do tagging, you know, things like RBAC. Yeah. That's that's what really gets me excited about what Microsoft's been doing with Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. So, you know, you said that you work for a consulting company. So obviously as, you know, as someone that is working for a consulting company and also as, you know, someone that manage other consultants, I'm sure you get a lot of inputs. I'm sure you get a lot of information coming in, flowing in. Tell me about you know implementations that you that you that you've heard of um, weird stuff that people are doing with Azure Arc based on what you've been seeing in the wild. Can you can you share me some details around that? Yeah, there's I can't share a ton of details, but there are customers that are are looking at and exploring Azure Arc for scenarios right now. There are customers that have you know an on-premises footprint and customers that are going with multi-cloud as their strategy. So they're exploring Azure Arc to help with that strategy. And so it's so, beyond, oh, go ahead. No, I, I mean, it's, it's, a good, it's a good segue to what I wanted to ask you regarding this whole notion of Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. Are you seeing like fleet management, uh, any other use cases that, that people care about? Yeah, fleet management is, is a big one as the footprint of Kubernetes clusters and organizations, especially like AKS grows, right? Some of our customers um, have like a fewer amount of Kubernetes clusters, and then there's some enterprises that have just tons of Kubernetes clusters, like mm -hmm. in, you know, like 50 or more, right? Production. And so there's a need to be able to manage that in an easier way. So that fleet management is really attractive. The yeah. other thing that, that we're starting to see um, some traction around and a lot of interest, and it's still very early on, is GitOps. Mm -hmm. And so um, customers are interested in, in what Microsoft's doing with GitOps with Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, as well as mm -hmm. the stuff that's coming in AKS. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm also a big advocate for GitOps. I like the process. I like the way, like the approach that people are taking with GitOps. Tell me, tell me more about this. What, what is, what is exciting about GitOps to you? I know you've been a big advocate for this type of stuff, but why, what's the reason? 
Um, well, there's there's many reasons, many benefits to it, but the big one is making it easier for developers to essentially work with Kubernetes clusters. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to jump on a Kubernetes cluster and start running kube control commands, they could just put their their code into a, a Git repository and let it deploy from there, right? Yeah. And let the Git ops operator just take a, take care of everything from there. The other thing is just like better security, right? We talk about shifting security left. Well, having a GitOps operator and having the credentials live there instead of giving that to, you know, teams or even putting that in pipelines in something like ADO or, or GitHub is taking that security and just yeah. shifting left and just helping all the more, right? The more and more we can do for security up front is better. And then the audit that you get for having your code in Git and mm -hmm. doing your deployments through there. Now, GitOps is still relatively new, so it's like a, it's another like mind shift for folks, right? And kind of yeah. a shift on, oh, I don't get to connect to the Kubernetes cluster anymore and deploy things or make changes. I have yeah. to like get really good at uh, building my manifest files or my Helm charts or what have you, right? So yeah. that's kind of a that's kind of a challenge of like, okay, you need to adopt a new operating model but it's gaining a lot of traction and especially a ton of interest. So, you know, one of the, and I think you hit the very important point. One of the things that people tends not to think about when it comes to GitOps, you know, they think about the fact that they can roll out an application and all that. But I think with Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes and the fact that we have like this GitOps configuration notion, it's not just that, it's also the fact that we have cluster and namespace configurations. Right. Yes. And when people think about their applications, they usually think about it with the context of, okay, I'm going to deploy my applications in a namespace. But when it comes to a cluster configuration, this is where all the security concerns comes into place. When you can do like cross cluster or horizontal configuration across all your Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters. And this stuff include things like role-based access, like you mentioned, deploying application um, uh, security applications, right? Service meshes, uh, ingress controllers, whatnot that are spent across all these clusters. So I think that's a very important point. It is, and that that is actually another exciting uh, cross point between Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes and GitOps and Azure Policy. The fact that you can onboard uh, Kubernetes clusters into Azure Arc. And then, ha you know, through Azure policy, kind of mm -hmm. apply those those GitOps configurations right out of the gate for fleet management is huge, right? For enterprises, they're developing uh, standards mm -hmm. and, and operating models for their Kubernetes clusters. And really, those are the patterns, right? So what you can do with, with Arc-enabled Kubernetes and GitOps is take those patterns and enable that yeah. through automation. So I, so I think we're going to see more and more of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being used by organizations, especially I enterprises. Agree. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Um, you know, Steve, before we are wrapping things up, there is one last thing that I wanted to talk to you about. So obviously you've been very involved in, in the Azure community, 10 time MVP. So that's impressive. Um, and I know that recently you also came up with a new Pluralsight course. Um, so I wanted you maybe to talk about this a bit, share that with the audience and obviously want to share the link down below. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I recently published uh, an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes getting started course. And this is really a course to help you get started with Azure Arc K8, right? And it kind of takes you through um, what Arc K8 is, how it works, what it means, the use cases, the fact that, um, you know, Kubernetes cluster the amounts of Kubernetes clusters are growing in the enterprise, right? You'll right. see some information on that. And then I take you through how to set things up. How do you connect to your Kubernetes clusters? I give a demo on connecting to a GKE cluster. Um, I take you through deploying apps through, uh, through GitOps to your Kubernetes cluster. And really it's a, it's a place to get you started. And I'd say, watch the course, check it out. You can mm -hmm. follow the demos and then jump over to, and no pun intended there, jump over to the Azure Arc Jumpstart Kit <laughs> where you can see like examples where you can follow along, right? And in fact, 
uh, through the demos in my course, I purposely use some of the Azure Arc uh, Jumpstart Kit scenarios. That way you could actually go out to the Azure Arc Jumpstart Kit and kind of follow along yeah. as you're learning, right? Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of what we planned when we started the project. We wanted people from the community and also within Microsoft to to take all these scenarios and make something out of it, right? Either a production deployment or um, a learning path or a course like like you did. So I think it's awesome that you are able to do a bit of research, use the jumpstart, and then do your own jam and create this Pluralsight course. So I think that's I think that's awesome. And like I said, we're going to share. Uh, uh, the link, uh, the link below. So definitely one more thing about the, yeah, the course. course. So there's actually a full path of courses that are being developed on Azure Arc on Pluralsight. Yeah. So I'm actually working on a, a one for Azure Arc enabled servers that'll come out, um, in the near future. And there's, there's other ones too, that'll cover like data and the other Azure Arc offerings. So keep an yeah. eye out on all of that. Yeah, that's definitely cool. And I'm definitely going to watch watch that space. Um, I like to see how people are approaching Azure Arc, especially from, like I said, from learning models and training uh, point of view. So that's so that's exciting to me. So, Steve, you know, um, I want to I want to let the audience know how to reach out to you. So what's the best way of reaching out to you? Uh, so at Bukatech is my Twitter and my blog is the same. It's it's uh, Bukatech.com. So I've, you know, that's kind of my brand find everything I do under that. Awesome. So thank you, Steve, for, uh, for being here, um, a guest on the show. Uh, it's been great talking to you. It's a short and sweet episode. That's how we roll in jumpstart lightning. And for the audience, make sure that you're subscribing and hitting the bell button. So you will know when we are releasing a new episode and also when we're releasing a new jumpstart demo for you. So thanks everyone. Thank you, Steve, for being a guest. And we're going to see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having me on.